I'm on a rolling chair, so. Well, hello, lovely humans. Welcome to my office. In this week's video, we are doing three home decor DIYs that I've been influenced to do by the people that I follow on the interwebs. Uh, first person is Wendy from the K Wendy Home uh, on Instagram, and the second one is Justine from The Justine on, on Instagram. Listen, if you are into DIY content and snarky humor, I don't know what you're doing, get on over there and follow them as quickly as possible. But basically, when they craft things, I'm like, I gotta do it. Like, I gotta do it. But in order for it to be a tax write-off, for my accountant, I have to do it on my channel. So that's why you're here with me because, you know, I bought these as YouTube video supplies just so I can make them to have around my house. Let's just hope and pray that my accountant's not watching this right now. Thanks, Melissa. But honestly, all three of these DIYs are 15 minutes of crafting time or less. They're so fast, they're so easy, and they add so much fun texture to your space and I'm absolutely thrilled with the results. I will link as many of the um, products that I got down below um, and where I got them from mostly for my own records so when uh, when my accountant asks why I spent money on stuff at, and on Amazon I can be like it's for this video and here's all the links that I have saved. I mean all joking aside this is like this is a business cost. So of course I have to give a massive shout out to Wendy and Justine for being the creative little nuggets that they are and uh, for sharing these DIYs with all of us on the internet so I could then copy and paste and do my own iterations of them here. So thanks, thanks for the inspiration and the motivation and the snark. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into Darling, it. First up on our list is this stinking gorgeous door tassel. You guys, I didn't even know that I needed a door tassel in my life until I saw these on the K Wendy's Homes Instagram. And of course, I had to replicate it myself. Now the supplies for this are pretty straightforward. I've got my wood beads in different shapes and sizes and my embroidery floss, a pair of scissors, and a piece of cardboard that I will use for my template for the tassel. I actually end up finding a much thicker spool of embroidery, embroidery floss. That's rough to say. <laughs> uh, and decide to use that one as well for a much thicker tassel. Now with a uh, threading project like this, I find it's much easier to uh, tape up the ends so it doesn't get all frayed and it kind of acts like a needle. Then it's just a matter of selecting your pattern and looping all the beads on. One important thing to note for this particular door tassel is at the very most top point that would be resting at the top of the doorknob, I actually left it small beads so it would uh, nestle in on top of the doorknob much better. Now it's time to uh, finish it off with the bottom bead. This will act as the base or the underneath part of the large tassel. Taking one strand through each side, I double and triple knot this bead so it doesn't go anywhere. Now I'm gonna add on a few more beads to create a little bit of a tail of sorts to give my tassel a little bit of shape. Setting our little wood garland to the side, it is time to start working on our tassel. This part is seriously so easy. It's just looping your embroidery thread around your template quite a few times until you get the desired thickness. And once I got it to the thickness that I wanted, I went ahead and gave it a little chop to, uh, to release the first part of my tassel. Now all I gotta do is repeat that three more times. And as I go, I'm continuously squishing, <laughs> as you can see, to make sure each of the sections are around the same width because I don't want one being drastically thicker than the others. And now let's assemble. This part might be the most complicated part to describe. Um, you go ahead and take the loop of one tassel section and put it through the loop of another tassel section. Basically, we're gonna make a big old grid out of this. As you are putting these together, it is super important to make sure that the ends of your tassel are staying as even as possible because uh, if they end up getting a little bit off, your end result is going to uh, not have an even edge to the bottom of the tassel. Now, of course, there's gonna be some trimming no matter what you do, but of course, keeping the ends as even as possible is ideal because then that means less trimming for you. Next, we grab our little wood bead garland and 
take the tail and put it through the center of the little square that we've just made. Slowly and carefully scoot the loops as close to the large bead as physically possible. You're gonna wanna make sure that that is uh, well covered because I mean, it's fine if it shows, but the whole intent is to have the tassel look like it's organically hanging. It's a good idea to do this nice and slow as well because you wanna keep those loops as together as possible. Once reaching my desired effect on the top of the tassel, I then take some more embroidery floss and give this little guy a neck. <laughs> and then just take a little bit more embroidery floss and go ahead and, and tighten that up so it has a nice thick border between the top knot and the rest of the tassel. You can see here I wasn't super good about keeping my ends even, so I spent a decent amount of time cutting. Do as I say, not as I do. But you know what? Who cares? Because it was worth it in the end. For my next trick, <laughs> we are gonna use this remote controlled puck light and a little bit of glue to take what normally would be a wired wall sconce and turn it into a battery operated remote controlled little slice of heaven for your wall. So this is the wall sconce that I got from Amazon. I will leave the cords attached in case I wanna use this one day, um, but for right now, they're pretty much useless to me. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and take the back off of your puck light and apply your E6000 glue. And because it's a little bit tricky to hold, I ended up grabbing a piece of floral wire and uh, hooking it through those holes on the back to give me a handle of sorts so I could be sure to really center it in the middle of the sconce. And then set it aside to cure for about 24 hours. Since I had already decided where I wanted at least two of these to go, next up it was just a matter of installing them. I am immensely thrilled with how these sconces turned out because I didn't really need much of my husband's help at all. <laughs> what a fun way to add a little bit of ambient lighting into a space without having to run any electrical wires at all. For my final trick of the day, we are making concrete bowls. You've never seen this before. <laughs> So we get the bowls, the concrete, and a little bit of spray to grease things up so the bowls slide out nicely once they've cured. Okay, how do we do this? Are you keeping this out of you? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I don't, wasn't sure I should talk. Am I like walking you through this? Or are you doing this? And I'm secretly No, this, there is no it? secret that I have no idea how to do this. Okay. And when you did it, you like did that little pulling thing? Yeah. Like that? Yeah, it doesn't really work because it's like a bowl, so. Yeah. It's just to gradually introduce water. Because it's very easy to over or underdo. Yes. Or like mess it up very don't, quickly. Don't ever dump all of it in because if you put too much water, you want to have extra to put more powder back in. You probably just mix it with your hand. I don't want to mix it with my hand. Ah! No! These are not DIY pants. <laughs> It's not a spider, but it's a bug. You want me to do it? Yes, I do. <laughs> this could absolutely be a single person project. I could be doing this by myself. But my husband was right there and didn't have anything to do, so I figured I'd put him to work. Can I help you, Dad? Look out, bud. Don't get the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you can help. That's fine. Just nice and slow, okay? Good mixing, bud. So we only have a All little right. bit of time now. I'm going to spray back here because we're running out of time. Once you've filled your bowls to the desired level, find something just heavy enough to weigh it down, but not so heavy that it spills out over the sides. I've made that mistake. <laughs> and then simply leave it alone for 15 minutes. 
because we use that arid spray, but also olive oil could work as well, to grease up these bowls before stacking them together, removal was a heck of a lot easier. Yay! And we just so happened to have enough left over that my husband actually made this other bowl off to the side. So now I'm just gonna have a gaggle of concrete bowls everywhere and I'm not mad about it. Okay, I can't even, I can't even tell you. I don't, I can't figure out which one is my favorite. I've got the sconces right here in my office. Where's, oh, there's the other one. I've got um, a door, where's the door tassel? Where'd I put it? I've got a door tassel on my calendar. <sighs> you guys. These are so dreamy and so, so easy to do. Um, so I highly recommend that you check out both of their Instagrams because you will, I promise, you will not regret it. So that's all we have for today, folks. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like this video, if you like fun DIYs like this, be sure to jump on down there and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe so we can keep hanging out more. You know, I promise I have original content ideas every once in a while, okay? It's not all plagiarized. Just kidding, they told the internet that we could do them, so I'm just doing them in a YouTube video, all right? And until next week, bye guys.